for people who don't know that history, we had this whole cholesterol myth for a long time. It turns out that heart disease is really an inflammatory disease. Yeah. And it has to do with inflammation in the blood vessels. Alzheimer's disease is inflammatory. Cancers are inflammatory. Breast cancer, prostate Obesity, cancer. Obesity, diabetes. Obesity and diabetes, inflam also inflammatory. Uh, the diabetes one is really interesting, actually, and it's related to your sugar hypothesis. So every time your blood sugar goes up, your pancreas has to put out a squirt of insulin. There's a little protein called insulin-associated polypeptide, which feeds back onto the pancreas to turn off the little squirt of insulin after it goes up. So if you look at your blood level, it looks like the surface of the ocean, but underneath you've got all this activity going on maintaining sure. your glucose. Yeah. And in people who are obese, they excrete a hundredfold excess of the insulin associated polypeptide, yes. gets back into the cell in what's called the endoplasmic reticulum of the cell and blows it up and kills it over a period of two to 10 years. Mm -hmm. So a type two diabetes, which we never understood in medical school is really caused by obesity. I call it diabesity because 95% of the people are obese. And uh, we can solve this problem tomorrow. We have t very large studies, uh, the diabetes prevention program, 5% weight loss. When people already had high blood sugar very yeah. late in the disease. Oh, we get people who are on it. insulin who've oh. been diabetic for 20 years, reversing it in three weeks. Well, the overuse of insulin is amazing. I, my first paper in 1977 as a resident was on diabetic ketoacidosis, type 1 diabetics. And for some reason, doctors were using 70, 80 units. And we reduced it to like seven or eight units with adequate hydration. Same thing in type 2. People are chasing the glucose control. So a person comes in with a high blood sugar, oh, let's take some more insulin. More insulin, they deposit more fat, more yeah. insulin resistance, do it again. So I have people coming in with 80 to 100 units, units of, of insulin. insulin. And this yeah. is back in the 1980s when I first started doing this work at a county hospital. Yeah. And weight loss completely. Now we don't use the word reverse, but well, we Well, insulin say, causes weight gain when you give absolutely. it to patients with diabetes. Sure, it it's causes a feeding their, hormone. Right. And uh, it deposits amino acids, it deposits fat, and uh, stores glycogen. So the thing about uh, the, the loss of weight in these people is so obvious. I call it remission, putting it into remission because yeah. they have that risk to regain again. Sure. But we have had over 2,000 cases in our obesity center at UCLA. And there was a myth that diabetics lost weight more slowly than people who are not. And so we took plain obesity, pre-diabetes and diabetes. As long as they came to clinic, they lost weight at the same exact rate over time. And we have uh, 2,000 cases of that. And we can actually now, in about 75% of people, reverse their diabetes within about a month, and in three months, about 90%. Yeah. So it, it's pretty amazing. And are you using a higher about. fat diet, or what are you using? No, we actually use a um, a very we use a medically supervised, very low calorie diet. But it's not very low calorie because let's say I have a guy who has I, I give one gram per pound of lean body mass. So if somebody and we have two types, we have uh, different types of meal replacements that we use. But I might give eleven hundred and twenty calories and and uh, you know one hundred and seventy five grams of protein to a large man, where a small woman might get six or seven hundred calories, but one hundred and five grams of protein. Yeah. So and but then you know what's interesting. And there's fat. data that you don't have to restrict calories and you can achieve the same thing by increasing fat and limiting carbohydrates. Oh, absolutely.